talk to you. You talk to God. God, this person is getting on my nerves. I need you to help me to be able to see what it is that you're trying to get out of me. Help me to pray for this person. Oh, you know, write this stuff down. Lord, help me to get myself in check. Help me to get in check of my finances. Help me to get in check of my personality. Help me to not be, you know, uh, a, a mean person, a fussy person, or always chewing on the rat. It's <coughs> always, he needs to write all this stuff down. Yeah. God remind Habakkuk that a life of faithfulness was most important, and the faith we are talking about is in blind faith, a faith where one merely believes. Instead, the faith we are talking about is a faith based on evidence. God has a long track record of faithfulness to his promises. Upon that track record is where our faith is based. Such faith trusts God's control in all circumstances. As a result, we can be sure in him, regardless of whether or not we understand his plan. We have to have faith and trust in God. Yeah. All right, repeat after me the prayer. God, God, God. as we face like as we face life's hardships, as we face yes. life's hardships, and want to question you, and want to question you, help us have, help us have the confidence of faith. The confidence of faith. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I thought to remember the righteous will live by faith. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you. We want to thank you for our lives, help and mercy. We thank you for allowing us to come before you one more time. I ask that something was said today that will help us to break up the fellow grounds in our heart, Lord Jesus, so we'll be able to accept your word and be able to live according to your commandments and your truth. We ask you to touch the people that are coming over the highway. We ask you to bless our families and keep them safe. We ask you to touch our pastor, Lord Jesus. We ask you to give him a heart after the things of God. We ask you to help us to pray for him, to lift up his arms, Lord Jesus, that we'll keep him lifted up before you because we know that he stands in the gap. We love you, we adore you, we magnify you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to see somebody in the house today. I've been very worried, very concerned there. It seems like every time I dial the phone number, I got the wrong number. I can't. <laughs> Can't been, been trying to check up. I said, well, I'm going to make sure I had the right number when she, when she come back in the door. How you feel? Thank you, Pastor. It's good to see you. Wonderful. Young man, how are you? Very good. Very good. God is good. God is so good. So, so good. Um... Now our programs. A morning processional song. I got your song. I, I got it. it. That's gonna be the uh, the uh, music before the uh, sermon. It's gonna fit right in too. Yep. Sister texted me. She said, "I want." Get this one. I said, I got it ready. I got it ready. This one here. Thank you. 
Jesus. Oh, excuse me. I don't need the Lord. <laughs> Y'all just going on leave. Amen. But I need him. Oh, my Every day. Every day. Every day is a struggle. Every day is a new fight. Yes. Every day is something different that keeps coming our way. Yes. Sir. Satan won't give us no rest. Now he'll let you think you can sit down and rest. Yes. But that's when he's waiting to attack you. Amen. So we have to be careful. Amen. Amen. We have to be very, 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 very careful. Yes. Good morning, everybody. I'm so happy, so elated to see those who made it out this morning. Amen. I'm even happier for those that have a desire to get out that couldn't get out. We continue to keep them in prayer, keep them in our memories, and never forget about them. You know, we never know what somebody's going through. Amen. You know, we only know what we're experiencing, and we have to be cognizant of that and always keep those people in prayer because somebody prayed for you. Amen. Somebody Amen. prayed for me. And if it had not been for the grace of the God, the grace of the Lord, where would we be? Amen? Amen? If it had not been for somebody praying for us, when we didn't have enough sense to pray for ourselves, Amen. where Amen. would we be? You know, I was talking to my niece last night and expressing to her that I never, ever dreamed when I was in the world that I would ever be in the position that I'm in right now because it never crossed my mind. You know, when, when Satan has a hold of you, when, when Satan's showing you things and making you think that what you're doing is okay, you don't think about the aftermath. You don't think about the consequences. You don't even think that God wants you because you become so enthralled and so wrapped up in doing the stuff that's totally against God that you say, God, I'll never use somebody like me. He got, God don't have no interest in me. I, I know where I'm going and, and you don't want to admit it, amen? But when you when you look in the mirror, and I told us, a lot of times you gotta, you got to look in the mirror and it ain't always pretty what you're going to see. All right. Now. You can have all the lipstick on, the fresh cuts, the clean shave, but it ain't what it looks like. All right. Amen. And so when, 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 when God expressed to me that he wanted to use me for his purposes, for his will, and, and I, I had my niece laugh, and I says, you know, because my brother's name is Randolph, my name is Rudolph, and I, I always tell y'all, I says, I, God, I think you got me mixed up with Randy. You, you sent the guy to Rudy, and I, I know you know a lot of things, but somewhere along the line, the wires got crossed. And he says, no, I'm not interested in Randy. I'm interested in Rudy, and because I'm interested in you, I have a plan for you, I have a mission, and I sent my messenger to tell you about that. Exactly. And, and, and it caught my ear, and it, it startled me, and it, it frightened me, but I, I never forgot what that man told me. Mm -hmm. And when I, times of need came, and when I didn't have nowhere else to go, because see, when, when, when you get into a situation where your friends can't help you, where your parents can't help you, when your siblings can't help you, you figure out there's nowhere else to go. And those words rang in my ears that the Lord is calling. Yes, he is. And that's a powerful statement because when you remember that and you reach out and you say, if I can just talk to the Lord and he can just hear my cry. Yeah. If I can just get his attention again, hear my cry. Yeah. Then he can do something about my situation. And he did. Amen. And he Amen. did. And I told her, I said, I know you're going through some things. We're going to pray for her later on. I said, I know you're going through some things, but God can hear you. He hears you now. And you can't expect things to happen overnight. Sometimes you have to wait a little while. Yeah. Sometimes he allows you to go through some things so you can learn something. You say, why am I going through these painful moments in my life? But you see, it's to strengthen you and to teach you. Yeah. It's not to punish you. Sometimes you have to have any, anybody in here ever got spanked when they was young. Oh, and, and so you, you would ask yourself, why am I getting spanked? But see, you had to learn from your mistakes. You had to learn something. And chastisement was part of that process. Yes. And so sometimes we bring it upon ourselves that we have to be chastised in order to learn and be able to move on. Amen. Yes. And I'm just so thankful that he loved me enough to see me through it and to give me another day and to allow me to live and to breathe and now I'm in a position I can speak his word and try to reach other folks because yes, I think it's just terribly important that we get out there and we talk to other people that we let them know what's going on because he, he didn't just do it for me Amen. He, he didn't just do it for Ebenezer Amen. 
He did it for the world. And you see, we're all too quick to leave the world out because we got ours. Amen. Amen. Our responsive reading, I was talking to Brother Larry, you know, Brother Larry helped me out a lot there. He, he's he's going to be very instrumental for me in the future because he said, Pastor, I think maybe if we start singing some more of them songs and going back to how we was used to do it. And I said, well, you know, you got a point there. I said, but you know, I got to, I got to confess with you because sometimes, you know, my wife will look at me. She said, you don't know that song? Well, they ain't kind of like this. You don't know that song? Well, how did I get a voice? <laughs> she said, you don't know that song? I'm like, no. You know, I was finger popping when y'all was in church. So I don't know that song. And so I, I, when I try to pick out a song, a hymnal for, for us to sing, I try to think of something that I might know in case somebody else don't know how to sing it. And y'all know I ain't no real singer, but sometimes I can kind of try to pick up and play like I can sing. But Larry, he says, I'll help you. And so with his help, because, you know, I was kind of lost, but God sends his messengers. I even found a, 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 a YouTube video with somebody singing in case we don't know how to go. So, <laughs> and, and I like the idea of having a, a a, a program, a, a structured order of service. Amen? Amen. You know, somebody was telling me, and I don't want to really go into detail, that I, I need to just throw all that out the window. The, the Baptist order of service and this, that, and the other thing, and and, and just do my thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God said, I got an order. You don't follow it. Now, sometimes if the spirit leads you a little bit off the path, that's okay, but you stay on the path because there's a narrow path to heaven and a wide path to hell. So I can't follow everybody else's lead. I'm, I'm responsible for this flock. They're not. So thank you for your suggestion. Love you, Toodles, and uh, we're going to do how God wants us to do. Amen. If the spirit leads me to do something else, I will, but until then, we're going to follow. Amen. Amen. Uh, our uh, scripture reading for the day. Is in the back of the red hymn, those 546, God the Creator. 546, God the Creator. If we can stand for the reading of the word, God the Creator. And then what I've been trying to do is I, I, I'll try to tie in all of our music and our scriptural readings with our message so that everything coincides. So when you get home, you can say, Oh, I see how that all connects. Amen. Amen. Because believe it or not, most of the time, and I never talk to Sister Marilyn about her, her Sunday school lessons, but it's just so coincidental how God confirms everything. Her, her lessons go with my sermons, and I don't call and say, I mean, I have the scriptures, but I don't be truthful with you with my schedule. I don't, I haven't looked at the Sunday school lesson. I mean, I just, y'all understand, right? You know, I, I ain't gonna stand up here and act like I'm doing something that I'm not. Because my schedule is real busy. I'm trying to go to school and get my BA in uh, in, in the Bible studies and, and everything, and then trying to rehab this apartment and trying to work and trying to write sermons and everything else. So I'm, I'm a little busy. So if I don't get a chance to read the Sunday school lesson, God charge it to my head and not my heart. God the Creator. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it in the earth, before it was the earth in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was no and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as in, as in a heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. 
Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the earth stand in awe of him. All together. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. May the Lord add another blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. 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 Our morning prayer for this morning. Uh, Deacon um, Willie, would you give us our morning prayer, opening prayer? Yes, sir. Morning prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pray. Yes, sir. Nothing fancy. You don't have to dance and none of that. I have a father come to you this morning to bless this church, to bless our pastor, to come to give us your word so we can be true leaders of your word. And to bless each and every person who stands in here to see you, to get to see you. We ask you to continue watching over them, protecting them, guiding them. These things are great to us. So that we believe you because you say and do things that you say is true. You never lie. And we say thank you. We are so great to your children. Keep watching over us, protecting us, keep guiding us from and keeping our feet on the straight command. Yes. And Lord, we say just touch every person and see it too. Enjoy you. We love you. There's no cause. This is your house to move for them. We say thank you, Father, for being so good to your children. And we can continue to be the honor and praise of the Lord. Yes. For being such a gracious God. These things are asked in your such and precious name. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, as the church says. Amen. 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 Our morning hymn for this morning will be paid, found on page 485. Will you there? I found music for 485. 485. Were you there? Tremble, tremble, tremble. 
for the day. Keeping in mind, my wife says, uh, now she's going to say, why do you say that? Because I like the bad refrigerator. But she can't keep nothing. She says, why you still got them birthdays in the, in the, in the program? I said, it's still February, right? So we're still celebrating the birthdays. Somebody might come and didn't get a chance to wish the birthday people happy birthday. So now they can say happy birthday. But I typically want to keep it in all month so that we can remember it. it's a special day for you, a special month for you. So happy birthday once again to Zaire, 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 yes, and First Lady Rosalind. Amen. Um, and then, you know, she's my spell check, and I thought I was spell checking this. And I still spell check and did it, wrote it wrong. So on the announcement uh, where it says Pastor Rudolph Woods will be at Mount Sinai in Charleroi, she gently reminded me that Mount Sinai is not spelled S-A-I-N-I, that is S-I-N-A-I. And nobody caught it for all these weeks, so we all live, amen? <laughs> I mean, I'm not perfect. And then, then she says, you weren't a very good speller at school, were you? Did you well, didn't you say that? Hey, Amen. You did. <laughs> and I said, I was a good speller, but I just spelled this word wrong. So shoot me. So I better be careful. She might try to shoot me. Beat me now. <laughs> Every Saturday, we still conduct our weekly church cleaning. Uh, we'll be back to Saturdays. This week, we had moved it to Friday so that I could go to... Uh, Pastor Eric Johnson's birthday party, and it was pretty nice. Uh, food was good. It was a nice, good time. In early, out early, so I, so I like it. But I want to congratulate and thank the cooking staff from last Sunday because I drove home in a food coma. <laughs> and then there was somebody made this pound cake, and then I should have grabbed more than I grabbed early in the game, but I didn't. So by the time I got back there, it was gone. But this pound cake, this homemade pound cake, is awesome. Oh, huh? 
It was two pounds big. Both of them were so No, no, no. I'm talking, I'm talking about there was this one particular one. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get none. You didn't get none? No. I didn't get none of the one I brought or the one that called that name. I didn't get none. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I got something for both of us. <laughs> and as Google Power said, it was good. <laughs> I just wish I would have grabbed more of it. See, next time, next dinner, because I brought my little plastic things, and everybody was like, <laughs> I brought my little plastic stuff so it didn't spill all over the car. I'm going to get my stuff to take home early. And when I went back there to get my stuff to take home, I'm like, where's everything? Manage it. He's up on that on them pork sticks, because we want some of them. I was like, OK, I won't take them all, because I was about to take everything in <laughs> But the food was delicious, amen? And we had a wonderful time fellowshipping, and I am just elated and grateful for everyone that put that together. The music was good. I mean, singers was a little, they hadn't sang in a couple years together. And so they made a joyful noise, amen? And God was pleased to hear them attempt to sing correctly, and we just loved it, amen? <laughs> But it was a wonderful time. Wonderful time. Brother Larry, I hadn't forgot about you. I just, well, I did kind of forget. I, I'll call and get that information for the uh, for the mass choir. Because uh, Brother Larry expressed an, uh, an interest in singing with the mass choir at the YWBA. And speaking of the YWBA, uh, as it was questioned when we decided to participate, but things have been going awry. And I informed them that uh, we would no longer be diversing our funds to them that we will be withdrawn from them. It's actually a burden for us to try to get down there. And then we get down there and there's so much bedlam going on and things aren't arranged and that's not how we want to be associated with things. They, they say that they, with your membership, you get to have the hall for one day. And I'm thinking, who wants to drive all the way down there for that big hall when we can have, we've got a beautiful dining room. And anything we need to do, we can do right here. Amen. Amen. So uh, it says, well, no more of our money will be going there. Amen. Amen. That was just what the spirit led. And um, I, I withdrew. So I wanted to make, let everyone know that, uh, because there were some questions when we decided to go with it, you know, and uh, the spirit says, well, mm, 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 mm. so that's where we're at with that. Um, and of course, as I mentioned on the fourth Sunday for Pastor Hobson's anniversary, I've been asked to be the guest preacher that morning, and they're going to feed us afterwards. So they ain't cooking any good as I cook. So, you know, we'll just take some time. That's the fourth Sunday. The um, Did I put the date in here? The 24th, 324. Of March. Of March, yes. Yes, because today is the fourth Sunday of February. Yes. So I have to remind uh, Sister um, Marilyn, it's the fourth Sunday. <laughs> See, she ain't old as you, baby. She remembers stuff. <laughs> I, I said, it's going to be a good Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If we can't laugh and smile, Amen. I just don't know what to say. Those are our announcements for today. And on our sick prayer list, I had to add a name because as, as I was speaking with my niece, she informed me of some health issues that she's going through. And, you know, we all have some type of an issue. Satan is not going to rest on us. He's going to attack us every way he can, anytime he can. He's, he's relentless. And on young folks, a lot of young folks don't understand the things that they're going through. And it's just an attack by the devil. On our sickness, we have Sister Mary Ann Bowman, I mean, Sister Mary Bowman, uh, Sister Carolyn Williams, Ashley Rice, Aaliyah Rice, Sharon Wade, Renata Tyler. My sister Judy, let's remember her. Uh, you're still on the list, Sister Gloria Wilson. You have, we, we, we've been having you on the list, and we've been praying. Amen? Amen. And uh, before we leave, i um, got to make sure I get the right phone number, because I like to check on folks. And I don't know what number I got, but they was like, uh, you got the wrong number. I'm like, OK. And nobody else had your number, so we're going to make sure we have all the information. Amen? And we'll get your son's number in case we can't reach you. And we'll be calling him. Amen? Does that be all right there? Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, 
Sister David Richardson, uh, Marianne Barna, Karen Argus. Uh, how's Pat? Doing good. She's doing good, good. Keep her on prayer. Gladys Allen, uh, Rose Hillen, and uh, Reverend Sis Smith's sister. And for the brothers, we got, uh, and also my, my niece, Makanda Tucker. She's down in Texas. And I think she's in DeSoto, Texas, where it's right outside Dallas, where she's at. And she was expressing to me that she's been going through a little bit of depression. She says, I can't get my mojo. I can't get myself motivated to do the things I used to do. There's been some issues that's happened in her life. Uh, her uncle came up missing and a lot of things have been troubling her. And so, you know, sometimes Satan will do whatever he can to steal our joy, to steal our motivation. And here's a very motivated young woman who says, I can't get my mojo going. I can't get my concentration. I can't get motivated to do things. And she's been sitting in the house and her health is, she's having issues with her health. And she's not understanding what's going on with her body. And she says she's been off work since all, the end of August. But all praise be to God. She had the knowledge and the foresight to be able to take on the unemployment insurance thing that was offered through her job. And so it's been paying her bills. But still, we need to keep our people in prayer, our families, because all too often and so swiftly, they can become ill. And she was talking about um, the family reunion, which I didn't even know we were going to have one this year. And, you know, it's important to stay in touch with your families because they can be here one day smiling and tomorrow they can be gone. And just not the older people, but even to the youngest of, of yeah. the people. Yes. So, you know, we, we want to keep all that in mind. And if you have a, a grudge with a family member, uh, squash that grudge. Yeah. You may not have the opportunity tomorrow to get yeah. that right. And you can carry yeah. that on you for yeah. a long time. You don't have to like the person, but you got to love them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to like what they're doing, but you have to love that person. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't like what we were doing, but he loved us enough to give us his son. Amen. We go before the throne of grace and ask for prayers. Heavenly Father, I come before you. I'm asking you that you continue to bless us. We thank you for the blessings that we've received so far, dear God, because we, we knew that we needed someone, some intercessory, something to help us out because we knew we couldn't do it ourselves, but we're asking, standing in the need as an intercessory for those who are standing in the need of prayer, Heavenly Father, those who are suffering, Heavenly Father, with the aches and the ailments, the, the ones that can't remember, the ones who are stumbling in their lives, Heavenly Father. We need you to wrap your loving arms of protection around them. Give them some relief and some comfort. Comfort the families that are taking care of the sick and the shut-in, Heavenly Father, because their burden is even greater than those who are sick, Heavenly Father. Give them the patience and the time and the love to be able to take care of those loved ones, Heavenly Father. Touch them in a mighty way, Heavenly Father. Touch each and every member of our congregation. Yes. Touch those who had a desire to come out but couldn't make it out today, Heavenly Father. I ask that you touch all those who don't know you, dear God. Touch the, the evil one, the sinner, Heavenly Father, because you were so patient with us when we were out there in the world that we didn't know that we needed you as much as we do, Heavenly Father. But you were patient, you loved us, and you cared for us. You gave us grace and mercy, and then you restored us when we asked you, Heavenly Father. We came to you on bended knee crying out for forgiveness, and you said, I love you, I forgive you. So I ask that you continue to bless those who are standing in the need of prayer, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless this world. Bless our rulers, Heavenly Father. Bless all of the ones who are governing over us, Heavenly Father. That they make the right decisions in our best interest, dear God. Continue to bless the church. Bless those who are out there, outside of the church, Heavenly Father. Continue to love us in the name of your precious son, Jesus. We ask and we pray. Amen and amen and amen. And now it's welcome of our visitors. Do we have any visitors in the house? Let's see. Is no visitors except the air that's come in the door. So uh, we just want to say to everyone that's here today, we're thankful, we're grateful, we love to see you. Welcome back. If you've been gone for a while, as you know, we, we keep you on our hearts and on our minds. We continue to pray for you. We pray that everything is well with you, even when we don't hear from you. But we just want to say welcome and have a wonderful time today. Amen. 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 And now it's offering time. Amen. Also, it's the fourth Sunday.
Let's see. Um, Willie will have the um, the um, offering for the pastor, and Ray will have the offering for the church. And also remember our building fund. Remember our building fund. We take pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and dollars. It all adds up. It all adds up. It's probably when the weather breaks, they'll start some more on, on some more stuff. Yeah. We, we were just talking about that this morning. The, the things that we're um, wanting to get done this summer. We like to replace those lights in the back. And also want to work on new windows back there for the uh, dining hall because uh, they are standing in a need of replacement there. And we need to pray on that. Yeah. Yeah. We have to, we have to, um, God is blessing us. You want me to pray? Amen. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you, Lord, and thank you, Lord. I thank you for this offering, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord. We ask you to, to multiply it 10, 20, 100 fold, Lord. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to bless the people that gave and the ones that didn't have to give. Uh, we ask you to bless them too. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Our scriptural reading for this morning comes from the book of Jonah, the fourth chapter, verses 10 through 11. Jonah, fourth chapter, verses 10 through 11. I printed the verses out on our program so that we're all under one accord. Uh, I printed it from the NIV. We stand for the reading. Sister Colette, would you read the scripture for us? You may be seated. May the Lord add a blessing to the name of your word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that, that word. We thank you for that scripture, Heavenly Father. I ask that you remove me and replace it with thee as I go forth to present this message, Heavenly Father. May it be absorbed into the hearts and the minds of those and spread out throughout the world. Let them know the message that you are giving today is not just for us, but for the entire world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now for Thank you. 
Thank you, Sister Marilyn, for that suggestion. Thank you, Brother Larry, for your uh, input. And uh, I don't know if you were here. When, I don't think you were here when we sang the hymnal this morning. But we thank you. I thank everybody for their input. Um, I can't do this alone. Amen. amen. I, I need your input. So when I reach out to you, it's because we are one body. The finger can't survive without the hand, and the hand can't survive without the foot because, you know, we're all one body. Everything has its important parts. And so I, I reach out to you because I need your input and I also need your prayers, but I, I need your help. 
and, and you help me in a great way when you, when you respond and let me know what you're thinking and what we can do to make this a better place. Amen. 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 Our scripture this morning, Jonah 4, 10 through 11, it says, but the Lord says you have been concerned about this plant. This plant is you didn't create it, but you were concerned about it. You didn't tend to it or you didn't make it grow. And I brought it up overnight and it died overnight. But should I not have concern about the people that I told you were going to talk to? Because there's a lot of people there. Church, we get so wrapped up sometimes in ourselves that we don't want to listen to what God has to say. Well, once again, good morning, Ebenezer. And I ask you a question. Do you ever get mad about something, someone, a situation, and then you blame God? Do you ever think that you are in control of something or someone only later to find out that you were wrong? Who, actually, who or what can you actually control when you really think about? And then what makes you think that you are in control of someone else? Amen. You ask yourself, why should I care? I mean, if somebody's going to do something that you don't like, can you really make them stop? Can you control how that person feels or what they do or what they think? Or even what they're going to do? Can you? What input do you have? You see, God spoke to Jonah and told him, I, I want you to go and deliver a message. And so often, because we don't feel somebody's worthy, we don't want to give them the message. And sometimes for other reasons, more selfish than that. And if you know the story of Jonah, you know that Jonah ran a completely different direction than what God told him. Yes, sir. You know, many times as folk, we see something and when we don't agree with it, we get all upset about it. We get all willy-nilly, as they say. We get bent out of shape and then and then we then we have the nerve to want to say something to the person and then voice our opinion. Not always being right in our opinion. We might even use some strong words or even try to apply on that person's view what we think they should do because we always have the answer. Amen? Or we think we do. We might resort to intimidation. Yeah. And in some cases, we might even try to bully that person into doing what we want. For some reason, we get the idea in our little heads that our opinion is the only opinion that not taking into consideration of the person about their thoughts and their feelings. Because we know it all. Amen? Amen. Wrote a book, published it, be out next week. Yeah. I know it all. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. My grandma used to say to me, and I try to tell my younger brother what to do, or sometimes other folks. She said, who died, who died and made you God? Uh -huh. <laughs> that was what she said. She said a lot of other stuff, too. <laughs> but I remember that one. Before the and even if it's just small things, we sometimes think that we have all of the answers. Ever know somebody who knows everything? I mean, they just know everything. I used to work with a girl every time the manager would say, well you, well, you need to do this. Well, I know that. I, I know that. Well, you need to. I, I know that. I know that. He said, well, you know what? I'm going to make no sales. Because <laughs> you know so much. Because everything I ask you to do, you already know it. But your sales are going this way instead of this way. Mm -hmm. You know everything. They know everything except how to mind their own business. All right. Now, y'all might have to put your shoes on because. I might step on some toes. Amen. They can tell you how to do something. They can tell you who to love. They can tell you everything about the things that you can even ask them. But they can't tell you how they got right. Mm -hmm. 
Because a lot of them are still wrong. Oh, grandma. But they want to tell you about your sin. Y'all know what I think about that like if I say hi. Don't let me eat me. Y'all know what happened to us in the right? I told you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I am white people. <laughs> Strong black people. They can tell you everything. <laughs> but you see, they can't even manage their own business. Yes, they want to manage the world. Mm -hmm. And then we have the ones, there are the ones that just hate to have to tell somebody something that might help them. Mm -hmm. And I want you to think about that. Folk that don't want to tell you something that might help them. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about this week before that, when we talked about the eight ball. People are so wrapped up in wanting to point a finger, mm -hmm. because when you point a finger, somehow, you somehow think that people won't be watching you. Because mm -hmm. you're going to shine a light on somebody else. You're going to talk about somebody else. You're going you're gonna to put it on them. So, so you're hoping that they don't look at you. And instead of telling you something that could help you, they would rather keep it to themselves. You know the ones that we talked about in the past. They would rather see you do something stupid and then pay the price mm -hmm. than to tell you something that could help you. Because if you do something stupid, they have something to do. All right. Mm -hmm. See, everybody that says, I'm your friend, ain't your friend. Amen. Amen. It takes a real friend to tell you that you miss button your, your block. It takes a real friend to tell you that one of your nose hangings has fallen on your shirt. It takes a real friend to tell you some unpleasant things to correct you. But it can take a real devastating enemy to just let you walk back into the gates of hell without you trying to help you. They actually know your situation and they know how to talk to you in such a way that you will listen and respond and yet they seal their lips and they hold back from trying to help you. Now you know sometimes when folks try to tell you something that they don't know how to present the message. Mm -hmm. I want to say that again. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. folks don't know how to present the message to be able to tell you or ask you or try to instruct you. At times I find myself being a little too harsh when I try to say something that might help someone what? And my poor little wife is feeling I like bread over potato chips <laughs> crumble real fast. I don't say it in such a loving, good way. And, and I try to work on that, amen? Because I have to look in the mirror. I, I told my, my niece that yesterday. I said, we have to be willing to look in the mirror and look at our faults so that we can try to correct ourselves. And God ain't done with you yet, and it's a process. So you wait to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. And so if I know I have one fault and I can get rid of that one fault at a time, and then I can remember that I've made that mistake, hopefully I won't make it again. But I am human and you know, when you've been sitting away, sometimes it just don't happen overnight. But there's a lot of folk that don't know how to they don't know how to gently, kindly, lovingly tell you that something they can help you. They'd rather insult you mm -hmm. and watch you walk away knowing that they have the information. Maybe because they don't think that you'll listen, they don't want to talk to you, or maybe because they don't know that you are worthy of being set free from the situation that you're in. A lot of people say that you deserve what you're getting. Because if you hadn't did this, that, or the other thing, you wouldn't be in that situation. <laughs> See, God knows my heart. But when folks don't want to tell you something that can help you because they would rather see you fail. And there's a lot of folk out there who would rather see you fail than to see you succeed because they don't want to see you get to where they are. There's a mess of people out there, amen? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I keep telling y'all, they are the I got mine folk. I got mine, you better figure out how to get yours on. It's out there. But because they don't want you to get yours. Mm -hmm. 
It's a terrible thing when somebody wants to always see you more press. God wants us all to be smiling and happy and prosperous. Great. He wants to see us all doing well. I didn't say he wants to see us rich, but he wants to see us all doing well. Amen. And I didn't want to get See, a lot of folks get that twisted, and they says that the uh, God going to make you rich. No, I didn't say God was going to make you rich. I said God wants to cover your needs. All right. Now. And when you're blessed enough, you might get one or two of your wants. But it's your needs that he comes first. Yeah. You see, we look at somebody's past and think, why waste my time talking to them? Because they're not going to listen. They're just going to do the same old thing. They always keep doing the same old thing over and over and over, and they don't listen. They're just going to do what they want to do. And so we can hold them back. The scripture, Matthew 18, 21 through 22, tells us this is terrible. Because we're all too quick to judge. And I want to give somebody a second or fourth chance. Matthew 18, 21 through 22 says, Then Peter, Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or my sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? And Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy times. Seven. Amen. Which means we may not like the situation, but we're supposed to continue to forgive that person because Jesus hung on the cross to forgive us for the things that we couldn't get right. And we still stumble, and he still loves us, and he still forgives us. And who are we to not forgive our brothers? Amen. We see our brothers in need and we prefer to turn our backs because we say they're going to do the same thing. Look at Jonah. God, why do you want me to go talk to these people? How do you want me to go and tell them something? All they're going to do is just go back to what they were doing. So I'm catching the long train the other way. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get me some sleep. Let them deal with it. But that ain't how it turned out. See, because no matter where you go, what you do, God's watching you. He knows where you are. You can't hide from God. Amen. You're going to go down in the bottom of the ship. God talks the ship all around. And the sailor said, well, wait, whoa, something going on. Oh, we wouldn't have a truck until the dude got on the boat. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Got to go. <laughs> you got to go. You got to go. And that fish swallowed up Jonah, and he realized. Three days. Maybe I should have been listening to what the Lord told me. See, we we we, we get a message from God. He tells us to go talk to somebody, but for our own self reasons, we don't want to go talk to them because we don't think they're worthy. We think they're just going to continue to do what they do, and they might just do that. But God said, "Go and do it." So, why are we not listening? Why are not we doing it? See, because you don't know what you're going to say today that might affect them. A year from tomorrow, from today, tomorrow, next week, next year, 10 years, they might be sitting here and says, Look what you told me. And the light go off in their head. They realize. But we're so busy pointing fingers and not wanting to waste our breath on those folks that we get all messed up. We've made many mistakes in our lives. And guess what? Guess what, y'all? What? We're going to make some more. Amen. Anybody in here make any mistakes in their lives? Make any mistakes in your life, bro? Every day. Get out of here. <laughs> you make a mistake? You got to go. You made a mistake because it's a little day, didn't you? I went. You see, we continue to make mistakes, but you see, but God's love was so great because he knew we were going to continue to make mistakes because we couldn't get it right. We had the law, and the law had to be abolished because we could not fulfill the law, and he gave us his son, Jesus, because he knew we were going to make mistakes. Amen. Amen. To forgive us of our mistakes. That's what we love. We know we're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes. I love you. Stay there. Don't do that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're not We didn't change overnight, and we need to understand that if he did it for us, then he can do it, and we'll do it for other folk. So when he tells us to go and talk to someone, we shouldn't always expect an overnight immediate change in that person. Amen. Sometimes you have to bring them along 
and you have to show them and then you just let God work on them. Amen. Because we can't change nobody. Amen. But to do the word and we let the spirit work on them because God will send us and if they see us, as Sister Mary likes to say, sometimes we're the only Bible they don't see. Amen. Mm -hmm. So when they see us as a living example, they know there's hope and there's hope for them. Because a lot of folks don't understand that. See, when I was out there in the world, I didn't think there was no hope for me. Because I thought all the people in the church were the perfect people. So I didn't want to go to church because I don't know what's going on. They were trying to put a new roof on this baby. So the stuff I didn't need. And so I was trying to fix myself instead of letting God fix me. And nobody was telling me that I had to go in there to get fixed. They let me keep thinking that I could fix myself, but I could not do it. Amen. I was too wrapped up in all the other stuff. Because every time I thought I was going to get step forward, here's Satan. I get one more. Here it comes in. And so it wasn't until I walked into the doorway that I got on my knees and I begged God to help me. And I told him, I can't do it by myself. I see what you were saying. I have to come to you and I come to you with my heart. I'm saying, please help me. Because I can't do it. I've got these issues. And when I did that, I realized it was only him that could fix me. Amen. 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 My mama couldn't fix me. My brothers couldn't fix me. My sisters couldn't fix me. My friends couldn't fix me. Nobody could fix me but God. Amen. Amen. And all the time I was trying to get right before I went to the church, I was never getting right because I had to go to the church to get right. Amen. Amen. You see, in this morning in scripture, we're at the end of Jonah's journey. And you see, he finally done what the Lord told him to do. Finally! After all this stuff, he finally listened. And now, 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 now he's still mad because he's still fighting the Lord in his mind. Sometimes when God even blesses us, we have the audacity to get mad because things didn't turn out how we wanted. Never mind what God wanted because we didn't get it. So in his anger, we see him sitting under a tree in the hot sun. Oh, he's complaining. He's down there. He is so mad. I can see the steam coming off of his head. I tried to get away. I tried to tell you, God. You don't want to listen to me. I'm John. I know these people. God didn't know the people. He wouldn't send you, John. Amen. He didn't send you for you to question his. He sent you for a different reason. Mm -hmm. So he's still complaining. He's still mad. He's still defiant. Still fighting with God. Still thinking that he has wasted his time. Mm -hmm. Wanted to fight with God. Son, your arms are too short to box with God. Amen. That's Amen. the name of our sermon this morning. Your arms are too short to box with God. Amen. Get mad at God. You think you're going to hurt God? You think you can do something to God? But all he has to do is snatch the breath from your lungs. And down you go. Amen. Your arms are too short to box with God. Amen. Get mad at him if you want. Destroy your blessing if you want. Amen. God is giving you everything. Every morning he blows breath into your nostrils and wakes you up. It's not your alarm clock. It's God giving you one more day of grace and mercy to see the things that he's produced, the things that he loves you so much. He says, I'll let you see one more day. I'll let you walk around one more day. You get to hug mama one more day. She get to cook for you one more day. You get to fix up beret one more day. You get to get up and help your brothers in the apartment one more day. You get to change diapers one more day. You get to blow your fist up one more day. <laughs> Colette, you get to play with your grandbabies one more day. Larry, you get one more day to do whatever things you want. We get one more day, but it's not promised to us. Yeah. Amen. But we want to fight with God. Gotcha. Don't be shook with this left hook. Amen. You're going to die, and I won't say why. Bye, right, brother. Yeah. Still fighting with God, still thinking he's wasting his time. Wanting to fight. So if your arms are just too short, Jonah's opinion 
God didn't answer it. People say, John, I want to know what you think about me more than tell me people to stop this same way. No, no, just wait on you, don't tell what you think. But he didn't ask Jonah one thing. Did he? Is there anyone in scripture where he says, Jonah, I want your opinion? No. He says, Jonah, go down to Nineveh and tell these people. Give them this message. Don't go run into Tarshish. Go down to Nineveh. He didn't, he didn't ask what Jonah thought about it. He didn't ask with Jonah's approval. He merely said, Jonah, go and deliver the message. And Jonah tried to do the complete opposite. You see, God can reach us a lot better than we can reach him. Amen. And I want you to understand what I just said. Yeah. It's easy for us to reach him, but he can reach us much faster and much better. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it was him that created us. Yes. Yes. It was him that planned our lives. Yes. He knows our thoughts, our dreams, our wishes. He knows our desires. He knows our aches and our pains. He knows everything about us. He knows every hair in our head. He knew when Ray was going to lose all of his hair. He knew when Willie was going to have to cut his off. He knows at some point I'm going to have to give up the comb chair. What? Because <laughs> <laughs> he knows us. Amen. Amen. He knows everything about us. He knows that sometime when I'm going home, I'm going to be speeding, and sometime I'm not. He knows my wife will always be speeding. <laughs> but he knows us. Yes, he does. He does. Amen. We never win the fight trying to fight God. No. But we can submit to his will. Yes. Submit to his way. Yes. Be obedient. Yes. And try to do the best that we can yes. each and every day. Amen. We are working progress. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Nobody said we was going to be perfect. As a matter of fact, if we have a perfect church, don't tell them where it's at because I don't want to mess it up. Amen. <laughs> Send me somewhere. You see, Jesus said, I didn't come down to heal the, the well. I came for the sick. I came for the ones who can't fix themselves. I came to fulfill the law. Because so many people are standing in the need of Amen. my grace, Amen. my mercy, my love. Because they can't get it right. Yes. So when I ask you, do you want to fight with God about something that you're not going to win? That's really true. Yeah. God saying, just do my will. Amen. Amen. Spread my word. Yeah. Give love to everybody. I didn't say you have to like them, but you have to love them. Yes. Yeah. Even if that person that you don't like is standing in the need of something, help them. Yeah. 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 And now I know it's going to take you up. Yeah, let's face it. Anybody want to do something for somebody they don't like? Come on. Because nobody raised their hand. Don't raise mine. <laughs> but we have to do it anyway, amen. Yeah, yeah, man. Man. Mm -hmm. We have to spread the word anyway. And we can't just keep it for Ebenezer, we can't keep it for John Alex, we can't keep it for New Hope, we can't keep it for Living Word, we can't keep it for uh, that other church in there, and all the other churches too. He says, take it out to the world. Spread my word to the sun. Let them know what I've done for you up in Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that he loved me. I'm so glad that he saved me. I'm so glad that he heard my that when I was standing in the need of some savior to come and get me. Yes. Because I told you I was flat on my back. Nowhere to go but up. As a matter of fact, I was so far out on my back in the mud that I was almost submerged by the mud in the mire. And I screamed out and I called out to God, lifted me up. Amen. It was sun, blood, water, and all. Amen. He says, I'm going to give you a reason to smile. I don't know if you're going to smile again. Mm -hmm. yes, I'm going to give you a reason to be happy. Yes, I'm going to give you a reason to be happy. Yes, sir. I'm going to take care of all those issues and all those problems you've been praying to me about. You thought I was going to do it on your time, but I'm doing it on my time. Mm -hmm. And understand it. I go with it my way. Amen. My word is done. My word is done through you. Amen. And now if you understand that, I want to introduce you to the mouthpiece. Yes. Because you can't make anybody who's lying in that seat. They can see the change that I've instilled in you. And then they know that what I've done for you, I helped the sinner, one of the rags of the earth. When it was so filthy that they wouldn't even use you in a blood shop, I could clean you up and set you straight and get your mind right and get your heart right again. Get you right. Yeah. And all you have to do is say, I do. I love you. I trust you. I follow you. Amen. Amen. As you stumble along the way, 
as you trip and fall, you scrape your knees. As you kick your toe, and you say, sometimes I end with those words and what I was about to say. You understand it? I am God and I've done it for you. Amen. What I've done for you, I'll do for the world. Amen. Don't keep your mouth closed. Somebody looks at you and they say, Are you a preacher? And open your mouth and speak my word. Don't stand here and be shy because you're ashamed of me down here. When you get there, I'm going to be ashamed of you. Amen. And speak my word to everybody that you can. You know, we talk about so often we hold back the word because we want to see that we can choose our audiences. Amen. God is going to send us in to some unpleasant places, speak to some unpleasant people that don't want to hear the message, but they need to hear the message. Because yes, sir. Yes, my sister said, we're going to be the only Bible that they see. Yeah. 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 Well, keep in mind, the arms really are too short to walk with God. Yeah. 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 The doors of the church are open. I don't think anyone here that knows what I'm going to say. Everybody has a church home, and I'm so grateful. But if there's anyone out there in the Facebook land, the Instagram land, or YouTube land, just watching this broadcast, we don't have a church home. If you're close, come on by as a need to the little church by the little river. We'll take you in. We don't judge you. We yeah. don't care about any of that stuff. All we care about is your salvation. Yeah. We'll make yeah. you feel loved. Yeah. We won't, won't discourage you. We'll put our arms around you. We'll support you any and all ways that we can. Because God did that for us. Yeah. Yeah. For all hearts and minds are still breaking. I don't perceive it. Mark. On, oh. my, on my eyes. On my eyes. Yeah. Uh -oh. The doctor said the gate for two times a minute. Well, well I'm going to change this. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be late. Uh, Church, come on up. We're going to pray for our sister. All prayers are needed in this instance. Amen. Amen. Yeah. All the God fearing folks, come on up if you can make it up. You can see your son standing by you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody prayed for me. Yeah. When I was out in the world, they prayed for me the way it's good, but I needed it. Yeah. And I'm so glad that they prayed for me because I can't work. Yeah. Yeah. I work. Yeah. I work. Yeah. I work. Heavenly yeah. Father, do so many things we ask that you can see your blessings. God, there's so many things that we don't want to do. Give her the strength and the courage and the analogy to know that you will bring her through this. We'll find the colors in the Father. You can store sight and make sure that everything is well in the Father. And you can store speed and power in the Father. You pray that there are no issues, no hiccups, no faults in which will happen or occur during this procedure, Heavenly Father. Just give your hand. You give us the servants and we trust the servants because you teach them these things and you provide them with the expertise to be able to work on us, Heavenly Father. And let us know that you will work through them. That you protect her, you guide her, you bring her out. Yeah. One hundred, one thousand, one million percent. Yes. Better than what she went in. These things we ask in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
Continue to bless us. Bless each and every member of this church. Heavenly Father, bless those in the past who've gone on before us. Bless those in the beginnings of the churches. Heavenly Father, continue to bless the church. Bless all those who believe and trust in your precious son. We know what the answers are. We turn to you, each and every one of us. We got to continue to bless us and love us in the name of your precious son, Jesus. Let the church say amen. You are just amen. 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah.